Tips and tricks videos for the iPhone are all well and good. They've kind of become my bread and butter over the past few years. But the problem with tips videos in general, especially when it comes to productivity, is that they can sometimes feel a little bit theoretical. A comment that I get all the time on my iPhone videos is that people want to know how I use my actual iPhone to get more work done. So I thought what better time than now than to make that actual video. Now, a quick disclaimer, I don't work from my iPhone during the day. I work here at my desk on my Mac. So when I talk about productivity on my iPhone, it kind of covers those areas outside of when I'm working here at my desk, but it also covers the way that I set my iPhone up to be a productivity tool and not a distraction tool during the day while I'm trying to get proper work done. So the first thing I would do is I would take a bit of time, if you haven't already, to configure your control center. It's a really useful tool, but most people either leave it on the default layout or they just fill it up with random stuff, which makes it confusing and a lot harder to use, in my opinion. If you want to get serious about productivity, I would definitely recommend dedicating at least the main page of your control center to just the tools that are going to help you get work done. So in my setup, for example, I've got quick access to focus modes and quick notes. And then everything else on that page is something that I know that I use often. And I've been quite ruthless about it here. Anything that doesn't help me be productive, I still keep it in control center, but I've pushed it to a spare page further down. Just a reminder that to do this, you long press in control center to enter edit mode. Use the add a control button at the bottom to add anything that you need and then drag and drop items that you don't want on the main page further down. Your phone will automatically create a new control center page for you as needed. I also drag each of the main items into a one by two tile instead of using the default circular icons. I realized that I was wasting time trying to remember what each icon meant, and this layout is just a lot clearer for me. To do that, make sure that you're in edit mode, then use the little drag bar at the bottom of a tile to drag down slightly, and to the right. Yes, you will be able to fit fewer controls on the screen this way, but honestly, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It forces you to be a bit more selective and focus only on what it is that you actually need. Oh, and just in case anyone from Apple happens to be watching this video, please can you give us the option to assign different control center layouts to focus modes? I have to believe that this is possible ever since control center became customizable, and it makes perfect sense to me. I would love to have a specific control center for when I'm working versus a different control center for when I'm relaxing. You never know, iOS 19, we may get it then. By the way, if you'd prefer to have this content in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video available. Check the link in the video description. And if you really wanna take your iPhone knowledge to the next level, check out my training portal, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 150 lessons for the iPhone with more being added each week, covering every aspect of your iPhone with each lesson, including a written guide, downloadable PDF and a video. If you're interested in that, scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the video description. Okay, next chapter, start making use of Quick Notes if you're not already. It's one of the most useful features in the Notes app in my opinion. And as you saw in the tip about Control Center, I keep Quick Notes in there for quick access on a daily basis. So there are a couple of settings that you might wanna tweak and a few habits worth adopting to get the most out of Quick Notes. First of all, head into Settings, scroll to the bottom, tap on Apps, and then choose Notes. In the Viewing section, you'll see an option called New Notes Start With. By default, it's set to start with a title, but I personally switch this to Body. And that's because when I'm jotting something down, I usually want to just get the thought out. I don't necessarily have a title for the note in mind. Having to think of one first just slows me down. So when you do it this way, your new notes will start in the body field and you can type freely. And once you're finished, just tap into the first line, hit return to move everything down a line, and then use the formatting button in the toolbar to add a title above your note. It's a small tweak, but I find that this makes the whole process of using quick notes a lot smoother. While you're in the notes settings, make sure that both suggest app link when composing quick notes and suggest notes with app links are enabled. This makes it really easy to pull in links from other apps. So for example, if you're in Safari and you want to create a quick note about a website that you're viewing, just tap the share button and choose add to quick note. It'll automatically include a link to the site so you can pick up where you left off later. I also make the most of everything that Notes has to offer when using quick notes. I'll add photos directly from the Photos app or take a new one with the camera. And thanks to iOS 18, you can even record audio straight into a quick note by tapping the paperclip icon 
and choosing record audio and that's something that I use all the time. Finally, make a habit of reviewing your Quick Notes folder at least every week. By default, every Quick Note that you create goes into its own dedicated Quick Notes folder. The idea behind Quick Notes though is that they're for things that you might not need long term, but sometimes you might realize that a Quick Note is actually worth keeping. So in those cases, long press on it, choose Move Note and put it into one of your regular folders. Or if it isn't useful to you anymore, long press it and delete it. That way your Quick Notes folder stays tidy and relevant rather than just becoming another folder where notes go to get lost. If you haven't already started using the Mail Categories view in the Mail app, I would definitely recommend at least giving it a go. I know that the redesign of Mail has received some pretty mixed feedback, but I think this particular feature is really useful, especially if you are trying to stay focused and productive throughout your day. So if you're not familiar with how it works, open the Mail app and tap the ellipsis menu in the top right corner. You'll see an option to switch from List View, which is the way that Mail has always looked, to categories and this will split your inbox into four main sections primary which is your most important messages transactions for receipts orders and deliveries updates which is for things like new subscriptions and social media notifications and then promotions which is for offers and marketing emails the benefit here is that your primary inbox becomes your main focus so you're not constantly distracted by less urgent emails all of your messages still exist you can leave the other categories alone until you're actually ready to go through them. Now, to take this a step further, I would also suggest making one change in your settings. So go into settings, scroll down to apps, then tap on mail, then tap into notifications. From here, scroll down and tap on customize notifications. At the top, you'll see an option for badge count, and I would recommend changing this to unread messages in primary. And that way, the red badge that you see on the Mail app icon will only refer to unread messages in your primary inbox, the ones that actually need your attention. You can also scroll to the bottom of the notifications page and enable or disable alerts for the primary inbox specifically. This is a good way to make sure that you only get notified about the important stuff during the day without being bothered by newsletters or stuff like that. Oh, and one more tip, your iPhone will try to categorize senders automatically, but it isn't always gonna get this right. So if you get an email that's ended up in the wrong category, swipe left on the message to reveal the more button, then tap into that and then choose categorize sender. You'll see that automatically is selected by default, but you can manually assign the email to any of the other categories. So with just a couple of tweaks, this system can help keep your inbox under control while still making sure that you see the emails that matter the most to you. All right, so let's talk about typing. So typing on your iPhone is probably something that you either love or hate. I personally hate it and I'm trying to do it less and less wherever I can, which means that I'm relying on dictation more and more. Now, I'm not going to lie and tell you that dictation on the iPhone is good enough to use all the time because it isn't. I wouldn't even lie and tell you that it's particularly good because in general it isn't. But what is good is using dictation to quickly capture your thoughts and then using an AI tool to clean it up and make it usable. Now, I would love to say that Apple intelligence and writing tools is up to the job here. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But in general, I tend to use ChatGPT as my go-to tool for this. So here's what I would recommend. Let's say that you need to write an email and it's gonna be a few paragraphs long. It's gonna take you a while to type. Open the Voice Memos app hit record and just speak out whatever it is that you want to say, complete with all the ums and ahs and pauses. And then when you've finished, tap the speech bubble icon to generate a transcript. It's not going to be very good, but it doesn't need to be. What you would do is then copy and paste that whole transcript and dump it into ChatGPT with a prompt. And I would use a prompt like this. Can you clean up the following text for me? This was dictated into my iPhone and you're reading the raw transcript complete with mistakes. Clean it up for me, but don't deviate too far from my original and make sure to keep my personality and writing style intact. Then let ChatGPT do its thing. And I would always keep that particular chat handy so that the next time that you want to do this, you can just dump the new dictation straight in. Then just copy the cleaned up version, paste it into your email and hit send. And the nice thing about this is yes, you are using AI to communicate. And I know that people have strong opinions about that, but ultimately it's still your message. You're just using AI to clean it up and speed up the whole process. All right, next section, reminders. Now, I pretty much live in the reminders app. Personally, the only way that I can guarantee that something actually gets done is by adding it to a to-do list 
and then not removing it until I've actually stopped and completed that task. But here are a few tips to really help you get the most out of reminders. First of all, I would definitely recommend making use of the early reminder feature. Now, I know that some people like to block out time in their calendar. I've never found that that works particularly well for me. All it takes is one deviation and my whole day feels out of sync. I much prefer to work in blocks saying something like, for the next hour, I'm going to work on task X, Y, and Z. And you can still try and assign a time for this using a reminder. It just adds a little bit of flexibility. So when you create the reminder and set a date and time, you'll notice there's an option called early reminder. Tap on that and you can set it anywhere from five minutes up to a month before. I usually go for 15 minutes and that's enough time for me to wrap up whatever else I'm doing and then get ready to switch focus to whatever the next task is. I use it as kind of a gentle nudge rather than a rigid appointment. Oh, and a bit of a side note, and a quick deviation from reminders, this is where the timer function in Control Center comes into play for me. So what I will typically do is go into Control Center, tap the timer, set it for one hour in this example, and then press start. And that will put a little live countdown on my home screen so I can always see how much more time I've got left in the current session. But here's the key part. If something interrupts me for anything longer than about 30 seconds, and make sure that I go back into the timer and hit pause. Now, this is loosely inspired by the Pomodoro technique, although I'm not going to go into detail about that here. You can look it up if you're curious. But the point is, it just gives me a bit of accountability over how I'm using my time throughout the day. And I just resume the timer when I'm back at my desk. And that way, I know that an hour of work is actually an hour of work. So another thing that I would recommend is taking advantage over how well Reminders integrates with all the other parts of your iPhone. It isn't always the smoothest integration, but it does work. You just have to sometimes know a couple of workarounds. For example, let's say that you're on X and you see a post that you think is worth remembering. For me, that would mean it would make for a good newsletter topic or a future video idea. You can tap the share button, then choose share via and tap into reminders. Just follow the normal steps to create a reminder and it will include a link to the original post. The same works for Facebook. Instagram threads and so on too many to go into detail here but in each case you're just choosing the share option and then selecting reminders from Safari it's even easier just tap the share button at the bottom and choose reminders from the list the only place where this gets a bit awkward is mail there's no built-in option to send something straight from mail into reminders Siri used to be a good workaround here but ever since Apple intelligence I found that this is unreliable it just tries to send a screenshot of the email to chat GPT which obviously isn't what I want. So I would recommend using drag and drop. Just long press on the email that you want, drag it around on the screen and with your other finger swipe up, open the reminders app and drop it into the list that you want. I've covered this loads of times on the channel but it is still one of the best tricks for multitasking. And finally this one is a personal preference but on my work focus mode I've set up my home screen so that the reminders widget takes up almost the entire page. It's dedicated to my working on list and I basically live off that during the day. Underneath that, I've got eight app slots that I curate to only include apps that I know will help me stay productive. So for example, I never include Instagram in there because if I did, any time that I get a spare moment, I'm going to go straight into Instagram and start doom scrolling. That app lives on my personal home screen instead, and it makes a massive difference to how much I actually get done during the day. Oh, and one final, final tip related to reminders, make use of Siri wherever possible to quickly add things to your list. So if something pops into your head that you know that you're going to need to action later, just activate Siri. If you've got an Apple Watch, this is even easier. You can just press and hold the crown and say what you want to be reminded about. I wouldn't worry too much about choosing the correct list or setting the perfect due date or anything like that. You can always tidy up things later. The main point here is just get it into the reminders app straight away before you forget. This is a habit that has saved me countless times over the years both in my work life and in my personal life. All right, so the last chapter that we're going to talk about is focus modes. And I've mentioned focus modes a few times already, so let's take a proper look at them. I've covered them in full in dedicated videos, which I'll try and remember to link to in the description. I'll set a Siri reminder to do it. So if you want to go and check those out, you can. But for the uninitiated, a focus mode is a way of configuring your iPhone to look and behave in a certain way when you're trying to concentrate on a particular task. So the most obvious use case is a work focus mode for when you're at work. So you would go into settings, choose focus, and if you're setting it up for the first time, your phone will guide you through the process. 
but I'm going to jump into my existing work focus mode because this is the one that I use every day. So at the top, there is an option called Intelligent Breakthrough and Silencing. This one is exclusive to devices running Apple Intelligence. So if you don't see it, that would be the reason why. But if it is available to you, I would recommend turning this one on. It uses AI to figure out which notifications are important enough to break through and silences all of the others. Underneath that, you've got more manual control. So you can tap into people to decide who you do or don't want to receive notifications from while you're working. You'll be asked to choose whether you want to silence the selected people or only allow the selected people through. Either way, just press add and pick from your list. My advice here is to be ruthless. It is okay to not hear from certain people during your working hours. You know who the time thieves are in your life. Personally, I tend to manage this by apps instead. I've made a short list of apps that I'm happy to receive notifications from during my working day. Everything else, things like Instagram, they all get silenced. And then when I finish work and turn off the work focus mode, all of those notifications are visible again. I also use the customized screens option to build a really minimalist home screen specifically for my work mode. It just shows my to-do list and then a few carefully chosen apps underneath that I actually need to use during the day. This switches over automatically when I enable the focus mode and it switches back when I'm done. You can use the smart activation if you'd like your phone to turn this on and off automatically or at a specific schedule. I just tend to find it easy to toggle it on myself. And finally, make sure to look at focus filters at the bottom of the screen because this is where you can control how individual apps behave when your focus mode is active. For example, in calendar, I've set it so that only work events will show up. My wife and I have got a shared personal calendar and I don't want reminders from that popping up during the working day. You can also use filters in messages to limit who can contact you based on the list of people that we set up earlier. And with mail, you can choose which inboxes you want to break through. So for me, I could only allow notifications from my exchange inbox while I'm working and I can ignore things like Gmail or iCloud until later. So there you go. Those are the tips that I use on a daily basis to help me get more done with my iPhone. What do you think? Any tips that I should have included here? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.